let's talk about food. And I mean, Carolyn said it, Ina, you had no idea because I know that this book has been, what, two years in the making? Mm -hmm. You had no idea we were going to be in the midst of a pandemic and yet talk about timing. You hit <laughs> on the perfect, perfect thing, comfort food. So, you know, be honest, There's, it's just you and me. Did you have some <laughs> inkling we'd need this? Um, I'll tell you what I, I knew, which is why I did this, is that I knew that there was going to be an election in a month. And I knew no matter what side of the aisle you were going to be on, you were going to be totally stressed out. What I didn't know is there would be layered on top of the pandemic, there would be racial justice issues, there would be all of these other issues layered on top of it that would make people really anxious. And the truth is, I, it's the kind of cooking that I've always done. It's, you know, just comforting old fashioned flavors in a modern way. And this was like the easiest book I've ever written. I just knew I wanted it to be, you know, comfort food with a twist, something fresher, something easier to make. Um, and I, I knew exactly what I wanted the recipes to be. So when, I, when I've got a very clear idea, it's just much easier. But who knew what was going to happen now? I mean, it was just so crazy. So what's, what's comfort food? What's your description? What's your definition of comfort food? I think it's different for everybody. And it, it, it's rooted in what you ate as a child. And I actually tell this story in the, in the introduction. When my uh, TV producers are here from London, and I said to them, so what did you used to eat as, as a child? What, what, you know, did you have peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? And they went, ooh, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, that's disgusting. And I was like, well, what did you have? And they said, oh, we would have white bread with canned baked beans and craft singles in it, cold baked beans. <laughs> let, let, let us make you one. And I was like, mm, yum. I said, I'll just take this back to my room and eat it for lunch. <laughs> So that actually, wrap it up and threw it oh, it's so awful. So wait, that actually brings up an interesting point. Have you ever been in a situation where someone served you something and you truly hated it, but you were too polite to sort of say, no, thank you, I'll pass? You know, I was, um, <laughs> it's even more serious than that. A restaurant opened in East Hampton uh, maybe five or 10 years ago, and we went to the restaurant and um, the chef wanted to send something, a treat to the table. And they said they sent um, blowfish. And I'm like, blowfish? This is just, I mean, I know the Japanese blowfish. It is, if, it, if the sack, the poisonous sack isn't taken out correctly, you can die. So I was sitting there looking at this blowfish and I thought, I have a choice right now. I can either eat it and possibly die or embarrass the chef. And, and I ate it. <laughs> Just, I couldn't bear the thought that he would be embarrassed. It turns out I had no idea. There's a different kind of fish in the Long Island waters that's called blowfish, and it's not the one with the poisonous sack. <laughs> so I ate it and I didn't die. <laughs> so, so this is this is now notice to anybody that has you over for dinner that you can serve her anything and she'll anything. eat it, <laughs> <laughs> except if it, if it has cilantro in it. <laughs> ah, right. So why does cilantro taste like soap to some people? I think I love cilantro. Logical. It's what I taste is different from what you taste. It's just there's no possibility you think what I taste is delicious. It's just okay. physiological. Okay. But, but what you cook is delicious. That's all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. So this book, this wonderful book, and we're going to get into a few of the specifics because I have to tell you, Ina, you don't know this. I've been doing an ina -thon all week. I've been cooking various recipes in this book because it was the most fun research I've ever done on a story in my entire life. So I want to get into some specifics. But uh, let me start by asking... You're it's called modern comfort food. So this is not your basic tuna casserole. No, I, I, it's, it's comfort food. So what, you, you asked this question and I went off on a tangent. It's, it's what we remember that we really liked. So I knew I had to have a mac and cheese in there because we all like mac and cheese, but I did it with a twist. I did it with wild mushrooms to, to bring out more flavor or a pasta carbonara, which is like so rich. You have to take a nap after you've eaten one. So I added <laughs> spring vegetables to it. And I kind of lightened it in a way and made it fresher. So each, each recipe is a remembered flavor, but it's done in an, either an easier way or a perfect example is the um, 
and, and tell me if this is one of the things you made, is the um, ultimate beef stew. I Did didn't do that, that yet. Okay. haven't done it yet. So I looked at beef stew and I thought, okay, it's usually perfectly fine, but kind of boring. The meat's usually a little tough or stringy and dry. So I thought, well, maybe I'll switch out the meat and make it, um, do it with short ribs, which have so much flavor and also flavor the sauce. And then I thought, what can I do with the sauce to make it more fresher and more delicious? I thought, what about beef bourguignon? It has a whole bottle of red wine in it and some cognac. So I, I, I added those things and ended up with something that's just so delicious, but it's just a classic beef stew with classic vegetables, but it's got great flavor. So that's the modern of modern, that's the modern of the food. Yeah, is to really figure out how to sort of make everything a little fresher and, and, more, um, and more delicious.